Hi guys. Thank you all for uh, joining us. Uh, I hope everyone can hear us and listen to us uh, quite clearly. So thanks for everyone for taking our time and joining us for this uh, webinar where we will be talking about the impact of COVID on your career decision and the short term impacts. For the webinar, we have quite a, a illustrious panel of uh, experts here. We have uh, Mr. Dhawal Gandhi, who is a chartered accountant. After pursuing it, he completed his MBA in finance and worked uh, with HSBC UK for a brief period in UK. However, later on, he found out his inkling towards the education sector and uh, now worked as a consultant at Cathedral and John Common School. Now he is a founder and chief consultant at the International Career Management Services at Casey College. And uh, he's a founder director at PD Learning Law, uh, a training institute in Mumbai, training more than three, nine, thir, 900 students. Thank you, Dawal, for joining us. Thanks, uh, thanks, Akash. Pleasure. Pleasure, have, to be, uh, pleasure uh, to be there with you all. Thanks for inviting, guys. Thank thanks for Hi, inviting everyone. Us. Thanks for joining us. I'm sure it will be a little interactive session. We'll, as panelists, make it as interesting as possible. We also have uh, Mrs. Teji Vargit, who's currently an academic uh, guidance counselor at Jamnabai Nursi School, Mumbai. She has more than 15 years of education uh, experience in education field. She has a great passion to work in the middle and the higher secondary students and to guide them to find the best fit for the 10th and 12th, both in India and overseas. Thank you, ma'am, for taking the time out and joining us and addressing the students. Thank you so much for inviting. Thank you. It's a pleasure coming to the SCRA forum. Uh, we also have with us Mr. Uh, Prateek Gandhi. He is a, a graduate, an entrepreneurship graduate from Babson College, US. From there, he entered into the education sector and now works as an international office for a lot of uh, state universities in uh, in Maharashtra, more so Mumbai, Pune. He handles the entire uh, international education uh, wing of the Mumbai and Pune universities. Thank you, Pratik, for joining us. Uh, Thanks, Akasha. Thank you for inviting. Uh, good to be here. Great. So, guys, uh, I think I've got a couple of questions. So, uh, we'll be starting up. So, broadly, I'll just brief you as to how we are planning to take the flow of the uh, webinar. Uh, webinar. We have got a lot of registrations and a lot of questions with regards to how they should plan their uh, once one student should plan their international education, considering that it has been greatly impacted by COVID. So we have collated certain questions and we'll be asking our allied panel and uh, telling them to answer those questions. After that, we will have a specific Q and A round as well, so that if there are any on the spot questions, they can be answered. Before going ahead, uh, I'll just give you a brief about uh, IQS. We are an institute, a uh, very new institute into actuarial science and uh, quantitative finance. I myself am a chartered accountant, have more than 10 years of experience of training individuals in the actuarial and the analytic group. And we thought, uh, since we are getting a lot of questions, we thought of addressing them via this webinar. Okay, so, uh, so without any further delay, I'll start with the first basic question that every student right now in the 12th standard is. Due to this pandemic, what has happened is uh, ISC and CBC boards haven't been able to complete their examination. There have been various attempts to uh, held this examination, but it has been with problems. In fact, very recently, yesterday, we heard that the CBC board got planned to conduct examinations in July. I would not venture out when the examination would be conducted, but I would want the opinion of uh, specifically Taval and Teji ma'am since they uh, interact with so many students. Teji ma'am, what do you think what the students should be doing? Uh, how they should be going through the situation? What are the tips? 
uh, honestly in this scenario i would always say that they should be looking inwards rather than outwards look at the indian education system since it has produced the best of brains also because we are not sure how the results will come out or when the results will come out the admission system as per the hrd ministry is like the the application will start in august and classes in september but how the merit based colleges will accept students is lot of there is lot of uncertainty in that area so we are encouraging our children that you should actually look at entrance based colleges which are really good you do have entrance based colleges like uh, iaqs you have kriya you have ashoka you have nmims offering you that you have christ flame shivnather bennett there are lot of entrance based colleges now it depends on the student actually what the student wants to do and how is he planning or what the children are planning actually but i would say look at the scenario of entrance based as a backup at least till the time your results are not out and then we see how to go about it you also like we were when we were discussing in the afternoon there are a lot of sandwich programs which are coming in the twining and the co-op so you can look at these programs but um, i would always say that look at it whether they are affiliated to a renowned university abroad look at whether they are ugc recognized especially the twining program uh, or the programs at russell poda they are not ugc recognized so you can't do your masters in india so either you have to decide what you want to do ahead for your masters and then go ahead ideally i would look at an indian entrance as a backup for the current 12th batch who is giving their votes So, what are your views? How do you add to that? Yeah, so couldn't agree more with uh, Tiji, ma'am. I think she's she's right, spot on. Unprecedented times, friends. Most of us don't know what's what's the scene that's going to happen next three months, six months, year forward. So, most of our students, uh, Akash, who've been applying to us to go abroad, a uh, massive number of kids have got uh, admissions to some of the most renowned universities across US, Canada, Australia, or maybe Germany, Singapore. Whole lot of these things. but now most of the students as well as parents are extremely concerned because in this times i think parents uh, and students both don't feel that it is the best time to rather move in there uh, everything is uncertain even most of this uh, in universities there have been shooting mails that we may not be able to have the uh, offline class that is on the on the campus so they would be conducting remote based classes that is online tutorials so parents are all uh, contemplating is it worth spending 20 25 30 lakh rupees to study one and two semesters in india and and then move in for the third fourth semester as tg ma'am said correctly there are a lot of universities in india are offering twinning programs one year plus three year there two year year two years there yeah one needs to check the credibility of those universities there are certain colleges which we would not be unfortunately naming them to degrade them but they are not some of the best universities offering two plus two or one plus three programs so ashoka kriya op jindal shivnadar whole lot of these universities bennett Atria, Plaksha, a lot of these programs have been coming up at Ashoka, Kriya, uh, and Ahmedabad, and some of the universities have got some extremely good programs. So backup, there is no question mark. So we have contemplated and divided into two parts. One are the new age universities, which is Ashoka, Kriya, OP, Jindal, uh, Shiv Nagar, and all that, and one is something which is existing for some time, like NMIMS, Christ, Flame, Symbiosis. Those are the ones which are existing for some time. Students can uh, uh, keep these entrance exams. They have to give it. and keep the backup options strong i am on the same page with tg ma'am backup options are are the need of the hour at, at in the current situations it is all about the financials too but the first thing friends i would tell all the parents and the students for part of this seminar if you have taken loans to go for undergraduate think twice our serious advice is to avoid taking loans and then going to do your ug programs abroad there are many many worthful courses which you can connect with ag ma'am akash to us on a personal level later where we can help create some programs or pathways but yes not you have to keep your financials completely in mind if you are doing any of those programs or, or whatever pathway you you choose to traverse yes akash perfect so uh guys so in a nutshell have have a plan be ready always think on that whatever you are planning to do have a plan be ready now before i go ahead to my next question we have done a, we have made a small poll everyone here has been talking that what has been the negative impact of the crisis 
however there have been certain industry or uh, which have been positively impacted so if just launching a poll to try and understand your thought process broadly what according to you has been po positively in, uh, in impacted by the crisis is it obviously healthcare pharma there have been some positive impacts on software it risk management uh, allied fields or if we have not covered anything if you feel there is anything up, uh, other than about risk management i'll just wait for all the attendees to complete the poll and then share it Uh, can you see say, someone messaging he can't hear? Can you just check with them personally once? Great, so I, I think majority of the people have voted. And I'll just share the results so that everyone can see. So majorly, healthcare pharma, yeah, medicine as a sector would be one which will be greatly benefited. Software, IT, automation, yeah, definitely one more benefit uh, because of the automation risk management typically any crisis leads to risk management benefits and i don't know if i've missed out on something but yeah there are six people six percent people feel that there is something other than these three that would benefit so taking the theme forward uh i think i want to bring in pratik into it uh under these circumstances pratik what do you feel are the best career options that the student has or what would be the career skills that he should look out for Can you hear us? Hello, can you guys hear me? Yeah, you can take it ahead. Did you hear the question? Yeah, yeah I did. I did. So uh, I think from a broad perspective, what students also feel is right. So post COVID, a lot of programs on humanities uh, would not be really relevant. What would be more important would be subjects which are related to technology. Uh, on a broad space, which are related to not, I would not say pharmaceutical because then a student would have to do more like an MBBS stuff uh, or sciences. Uh, I would say it is more important that they focus on subjects where the learnings are uh, particularly important from a 2030 or 2035 perspective, not the 2025, because by the time they graduate uh, and they really get into the workforce, they would have to look at a 20, 30, 20, 35. So robotics is something which is very, very essential. Uh, data science, actuarials, which you guys do is now getting into a lot of IT fields. Uh, so a lot of risk taking abilities uh, have to be understood by students. Uh, I would, again, so in each fields like wildlife photography, for example, would be really relevant. Uh, so a lot of students don't understand these fields and I think a student needs to open the bouquet other than the commerces and sciences which are generally on offer they could look at these niche areas which are going to be relevant post covid so what are your thoughts what is the stream so akash to be honest uh, during any any calamities whether it's man made or natural uh, there is always few winners which emerges as winning sectors and there are always some losers so I need to always spot out that in the past 20, 30 years back, none of us knew what was IT, what was telecom, and that is now completely ruling the roost. So the idea is, is as, as Pratik said correctly, 20, 35, 20, 40, 10, 15, 20 years, these are extremely young, uh, energetic, extremely naive audience who beyond point would not be able to peep in that far. But 15, 20 years down the line, yes, augmented reality, virtual reality, data science, robotics, are something which will never go out of the scene. Uh, at the same time, animations, graphics, okay, every of those things will have a massive role to play. 
uh, what you all guys do at IAQS, serious compliments to you because actually science by itself is a brilliant uh, content and subject which was uh, hardly addressed in India as of now uh, on a formal level. So I think you are filling on those vacuum. So uh, I would have a little contrarian view to what Pratik said that uh, maybe humanities may not have a role. I think still it will have a serious role to go ahead uh, or play because mental health is going to be a big thing. So psychology is going to be a serious subject which I feel people will have to study and that is that will be soon seen as a part of mainstream curriculum which even the people from the commerce and science should study as I always believe that arts and science people and not only commerce and arts but even the science people should have studied economics. Same way the knowledge of psychology is not restricted to, to maybe only humanities or liberal arts. It should be made clear to all because either marketing or finance or HR or logistics or supply chain, wherever you join, whichever stream you pursue later on, the sense of psychology plays a, a very relevant or pertinent role. So going forward, none of this field goes away. Social and digital media is name of the game. So there are these few great stories that someone can pick up. This, this is where the research needs to be done and people can go at some of those new age careers. Although some of the losing sectors are clearly visible, travel and tourism and hospitality will be in the suffering zone post COVID at least for the foreseeable three to five years. But I believe once the vaccine is out, okay, the, the thought is right now that the world is getting over. It's not. Okay, guys. So there is there is a huge uh, uh, quantum of uh, things to, to in on the suffering side, I feel there is still left for us to see. But post once vaccine is out, six months, eight months, one year, we don't want to get into that guessing part of that. The things will come back to normal because human beings by default are social animals. They will go back to theaters. They will wear luxury products. They will use, consume the whole lot of things that they were doing. It will take time, three to four years. But yes, 20, 30 years down the line, IT, pharma, healthcare also. All this will play a role, but healthcare and pharma has nothing to do with the students. Uh, coming back to just a short, crisp answer to whatever long things that I spoke is. Augmented reality, virtual reality, robotics, animations and graphics, psychology is a part of liberal arts, actuarial science will play a big role. These are some of those un, 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 not seen things uh, other than the tangible marketing finance which will never go out of fashion. Thank you. Akash. Great. So uh, I'm taking the thought forward. I think Teji Ma'am and uh, us were discussing in the afternoon. Teji Ma'am made a very, very pertinent point that more than the uh, college the course matters. So ma'am what streams according to you feel uh, are important? What are the courses or what are the streams that one should look at? See I see when whenever we are speaking to students we see two diverse points. One is about a student who already knows what he wants to do and what is the career path to take. And there is another sect of student which is the majority of the children who do not know what I would want to pursue in my career. But and they don't even know which is the pathway to take. So I always believe that the children should first understand that what are my strong points. The SWOT analysis is never taken care of whenever we are speaking to children. So when I am at crossroads, I would like whenever I have children, I will honestly say the children who are doing engineering, law, and anyone who's in a STEM field, like how Mr. Dhawal said, I will always say like. I totally agree with Mr. Dhawal here that psychology and humanities are coming up in a big way, especially with today's date. Yes, the virtual reality is there. The IT is never going out. The computing courses, the computing courses will always be there, but it has to have a human connect. At the end of the day, the robots are not treating the COVID patients. It's the humans who are teaching treating so i will still have that infection control coming out as a big career course in another five years because people who are doing biomedical or into pharmacy will be doing this research it's a very good course children who are not sure of what to do i usually advise them to look at interdisciplinary colleges like ashoka kriya op jindal shivnadar atriya plaksha they are very upcoming universities ahmedabad they are very very even Christ, Christ has interdisciplinary subjects. So you should pursue this. Another thing I tell children is at undergrad level, it's not only about academics or the courses. It's also about developing my skills at the end of the day. And topper will not grow in a career until and unless the 
that her child does not have the skills to work in a corporate sector i can still be a bcom cfa student and i can be a bcom ca student but if i don't know how to inter communicate with people i don't know how to work with technology i will never be growing in my market so for me my advice is yes the markets which are coming up i agree with mr dhawal psychology is coming up in a very big way which is the wellness sector you have the dev, develop ops which are coming up because they are the it automation sector we still need to find out how the things are going so the apps are coming out really well artificial intelligence is coming up really well like mr dhawal said um, the actuaries augmented analytics um i am seeing it coming up in a big way in a medical and finance field so i tell even the ca children children who are pursuing ca please do pursue you know the languages and the programs the jiva java python program are they are very much needed in today's date so just don't do studies it's not going to work you still have to pursue so finance will still be a major factor but you also when you are choosing a country again this was one point i want to make is when you are choosing a country accounting finance has to be done in a country where you are going to settle in ideally i do not i do not know how mr dhawal will feel about it but i have always felt the accounting finance of uk and india are very similar but if i look at us this is not very similar to what is being taught and is needed for the indian market so whenever we are looking at courses you also have to decide if i am going to settle there if my career is here so yes the economics and the next gen engineering is coming up at the big day quite quite insightful so quite a lot of careers guys for you to focus on data science actuarial science augmented reality virtual reality and then you have the conventional sector but one thing if you are planning accounting or some some allied fields study where you want to settle at undergrad i take it ahead 55 is speaking akash yeah sure akash sure. yeah so teji bhai i just wanted my thoughts on the accounting and finance profession so when in england you do acca when in us uh, when in canada and when in australia you do cpas so uh, ma'am just of late because of the ifrs introduction uh, the indian accounting body is now almost on the par of international body so it is just whether you do us cpa canadian cpa australian cpa or uk acca it's on par in fact all those bodies have a massive respect for the indian ca body that if you've done the indian ca out of your 14 papers that you pursue in most of these programs more than 10 of them are waived off you need to just uh, uh, do four papers which vice versa is not true because the indian accounting now is completely on par with the international accounting body because of the introduction of ifrs so us so gap is now we have adopted in india yeah so my question is like uh, honestly like if i am doing a usc accounting finance if i come back to india and uh, will it work no, no, for no, me no 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 yeah, no international international qualifications as ma'am said correctly uh, you need to keep your geographies whether you want to get immigration done you want to permanently relocate to some geographies there's those things that to be kept in mind so ideally when we do counseling i'm sure tj ma'am would be doing the same way your aptitude interest your personality your post education plans all are kept in mind when we when we customize certain career pathways for any one of you so I, i completely agree that you need to keep your post education aspirations in mind when you're choosing any programs thanks akash yeah i'll i'll take it forward uh now uh, typically if i plan talk about uh, education abroad uh, major countries are like us uk germany australia canada are typically the major destinations where kids want to go so uh Well, according to you, what has been the impact on the student life and the immigration of, for uh, these countries? So there have been a lot of hassles due to COVID. So if you, there is two part uh, that I would like to break your question into. If you're looking at current scenario, it's very fragile. So uh, people are already studying there and who are about to complete their education are extremely scared because they don't think that the job market scenario looks extremely conducive for them. so they are the one who are affected uh, seriously on a, on a on a much more severe manner uh, for the kids who are planning to go who will complete their 12th grade in 2020 you expect to get the results in few months from now 
and you're planning to go as a freshman in any of these universities, even they are extremely, you know, their thought process are jeopardized. They are not very, very clear. Huge uh, cloud of uncertainty is looming large on, over them. So I, I think more or less uh, people are skeptical. People who are getting leveraged and borrowing and sponsoring their education, I repeat, think twice, think thrice. We have enough good things in India in terms of regular programs, uh, professional courses that you can stick by and 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 uh, pursue. And you can always have masters as an option to go abroad. But yes, if if uh, there are some top universities in each country, say so that's US or Canada or Australia or France or England, wherever the kids have uh, aspired or applied for. If you've got admission, let's say UBC or University of Toronto in Canada, or if you've got to in something like you know some very good universities in US like university of what no anywhere anywhere any good university i don't mean specifically good universities you can look at the programs they are offering so yes today morning university of arizona has uh, mailed me that they have decided to have 30 micro campuses across the world and they've chosen eight to nine countries where they will run the first year of university of arizona program with those chosen universities and with the second third and fourth year they can go back to the university of arizona if their students are ready to pursue such programs, I think they're very handy. There are certain people who are also divide, choosing to take this as a drop year. But uh, take my words, drop year is fine. But uh, generally, the drop years are used to improve your CVs, to, to join to internships, to do some extra programs. I, unfortunately, that's going to be very difficult to find uh, uh, physical internships. So maybe they can do virtual internships to upgrade their CVs. Uh, some of these things they can do in case they're planning to take it a drop here my genuine honest advice is to look inwards in india take one year at least in any program in india and then you can take it forward or if they are okay with spending that kind of money doing online tutorials taking semester one and two in india and then transfer the credits course for the third fourth remaining balance semester that is also perfectly fine but 40 percent of if 250 percent of our students are seriously thinking as india at india options which they were once upon a time not even contemplating i think what has been the impact so since you look at mu and uh, more so the state-run universities uh what according to you is the impact because a lot of students go abroad uh, Pratik, i think you're muted Am I, am I audible now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. So I think there is an impact, but we just did a recent uh, study along with World Education Services, WES, and 67% uh, of the people still want to pursue their study abroad is what the result came across. Uh, so I also look at all the processing of paperwork at University of Bombay for West and other partners. Uh, so when, when you specifically look at the option, I think if I had to advise a student who wishes to come, uh, we would advise him to take a, a drop year. Not exactly. We could do and ask a student to continue the education from next year and look at a lot of the undergrad diploma and diplomas which are offered by state owned universities where credits could be transferred. Uh, so as a 17 year old, I don't think internship adds you any value without knowledge. Uh, you would predominantly, you know, helping do most of the paperwork or manage the social media handles. Uh, I would rather try to upgrade my skill as Teji ma'am earlier mentioned, right? I would try to learn certain skill sets like learn Python, learn certain programs, certain language skills, uh, which are really essential for tomorrow's life. Uh, so I could choose if you're in Mumbai, for example, right? University of Bombay offers a lot of these diploma undergrad diploma programs uh, which are accredited programs by the UK body by the US body so you could transfer those credits back to your universities uh, and maybe take the same graduation year uh, without having to spend the same amount of money so that's one answer the other is uh, like Dawal mentioned University of Arizona University of Bombay has a 160 year old standing. Pune has a huge standing. So all our credits are transferable across the world. So if you choose, for example, to do a program here, uh, like in your case right now when the file is there, right? Uh, a student could do data science one year here or two years in University of Bombay, then could go to a top 500 ranked university like Nicosia, could go to Canada, 
So we know for a fact that at the data science program, you could do two years in India and then two years in Canada and still be applicable for the immigration laws and, and purposes. Uh, similarly in the US, similarly in Europe. Uh, so University of Bombay or Pune or most of the universities have a lot of these programs available. Uh, and I would urge the students to just look up, you know, as I said, any new programs which are industry uh, and academia partnership based programs are a great start for uh, students to start looking at India as a study option for a first couple of years and then further go and, and you know, finish the dream where they have uh, if they wish to just go abroad. Even how is it, uh, the immigration and student life getting impacted? The immigration pieces um, are, are, are the Honestly, I'll tell you like um, like how Mr. Dhawal and Mr. Pratik have spoken. Uh, for me, I'm seeing like like when we speak to the universities as well, 50 to 60 percent of the students still want to go abroad. Now, when we advise students, whether when, when parents ask us, should I be sending, especially we have to divide the scenario into the current 12th who's graduating and the students who are coming into 12th. So as a, for the current batch, like how Mr. Pratik said, anyone who's planning to take a loan should not be going. Anyone who's not got a good university should look at, because if you look at UK, they look at your 10th grades and your predictives. So I might not have done well in my 11, 12, but I might do well in my 12th finals even in usa they look at your 10th 11 12th internals but if you take a gap year they look at your 10th fi final 11th final and the 12th final so in, there is a scenario where today's date i might not have got a good university but next year because many universities have become sat act optional uh, i might get a good score in 12th i might have a good profile so i would see case to case basis and decide another thing if i'm looking at a stem related field um, you do have opt for students in usa uk um, i see a lot of jobs for children with eco math and actuary happening so it's again course wise canada you can become a have a pr you are applicable eligible for pr if you have studied for five years so we are seeing a large number of students who are going abroad are either going to usa for stem field we have children going to canada a lot they have still said are we are going i mean we are still not seeing anyone not saying no for toronto ubc waterloo or york or queens we are seeing children saying yes for them uh, we are also seeing children looking at uk but we do tell them to keep a backup option because i don't know how the results are and uk is going to be conditional so anyone who's planning to go abroad so immigration is not for anyone like i mean it's going to be eligible if you look at us how till the time trump is there yes he would require people from the stem field to work there he would want that but children who are doing supposedly say digital marketing advertising design they don't have work there i mean you don't have post Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, you can interrupt me, Mr. Dhawal and Mr. Parikh. But what I see is these children coming back. Another thing, when I speak to recruiters, I do see one thing is uh, we are seeing large number of children who did undergrad abroad coming back, who are not from the STEM related field or not from the econometrics or economics math field. We are seeing those children coming back until unless they don't have they haven't worked well in their like if they can be spectacular children who are doing really well in digital marketing and have made their network and done things so you are getting jobs but they are very very selective i mean i will say only two percent or five percent or in single digits actually the, now there are children in canada who are getting jobs because of the co-op UK has got a two-year work visa, so we are seeing a huge demand in Canada and UK. So I am still seeing that the children are working. Immigration-wise, I see it's very tough for international students, at least in the current scenario. Until unless can like if you are going to Canada or a STEM-related field in UK and US or like australia it's coming up really well in data sciences and analytics i mean anyone who's there is getting a real good scale as an intern so it depends on case to case basis and country wise yeah Dhabal, you wanted to say yeah akash my i deliberately not addressed on the immigration side of it because at undergraduate level you should not look at immigrations right now 
Okay, at undergraduate level, you are only trying to make sure you get the best possible content, grow in terms of knowledge, in terms of maturity, evolve, and understand which specializations you want to pursue your masters in. Because all countries are different immigration part. We all have all Indian students because all of us are. I'm sure most of the uh, uh, target audience of the people right now part of the seminar would be 12th up here or lower grade than that. Kids, you have to understand all these countries are pretty shrewd and smart. No one is helping India or Indians. They want to, uh, you know, completely fill in their own coffers. They want to make sure that whichever skill shortage they find out, those are the areas they will be welcoming Indian students in. Other places, Teji ma'am said correctly, there are areas where there is ample of talent in their own country. They don't want to recruit Indian students there, and hence Indians won't have an option but to come back. Thankfully, your data science or actuarial programs are part of IQS things. They are actually STEM approved. They are STEM courses abroad. So okay, so then it is. They are very uh, open to those programs where there is a skill shortage. So if you are looking at immigrations, each country releases every year that skill shortage list. You need to understand which skills are in shortage in those countries, and people can pursue those programs. Immigration is what you are looking at. Canada is student immigration friendly. Ireland and England, although have this two years post study work visas, they are not immigration friendly. Coming to Australia. Sydney and Melbourne is absolutely saturated. They don't want international immigrants. So what has Australia done? The interior part of Australia, like it could be Perth, it could be Adelaide. Those are the areas which has become immigration friendly. So Australia as a souvenir part, we cannot look at it. We have to look at the, sets, uh, the, the states of Australia, which I have some of them have become immigration friendly as they want to desaturate the crowd, which is primarily was targeting uh, uh, Melbourne and Sydney in, in past. New Zealand, again, a very small country, other than those uh, programs in, in hospitality, in outdoor sports. Uh, it is not something which is extremely famous to do your economics and management and serious finance programs from New Zealand as a country. Singapore, uh, till 2006, 7, 8, they were good. Now, unless you get admission into NUS, SMU, and NTU, uh, Singapore is difficult to get any immigration or work visa chances. Uh, unless you get into this top three public universities there. Yes, so as Canada, ma'am said, University of Toronto, UBC, uh, British Columbia, Alberta, Waterloo, uh, Simon Fraser, York, Queen, Ottawa. Some of these eight, ten universities in Canada is fine, but again, which universities? US out of four thousand, we look at top fifty. Australia, the group of eight. Singapore, top three. Ireland, UCD, uh, UCC, and uh, the Trinity. Uh, England also we're looking at the top ten. Other than Oxford, Cambridge, almost impossible to get in admissions. But other than that, the, uh, if you've got into university, call it London, or you've got into Imperial Exeter or London School of Economics, it's extremely tempting to not turn down. So as all of them said is correct, the aspiration to go abroad is intact. It's just for this one year, two year dilemma, people are very confused what to do. I'm sorry if I've taken more time. Yeah, I'll quickly take it forward. Uh, so. Uh, all those guys here who are attending the seminar and planning to go abroad. So there is a high chance that there would be a virtual environment that you want to, you would be getting into. So we have again, have a small poll trying to understand how many here are comfortable with that virtual. So I'll just launch the poll, uh, request you to reward whether you would be comfortable with an online virtual learning environment or you would prefer a classroom setup. Just wait for the responses to seep in. Great. So, uh, yeah, as expected. Major people prefer the in classroom setting online is less preferred. So guys, uh, uh, the question or the calls that we have been getting here is that let's say it's, it's a six month case. Let's say I will spend six months doing online and let's say I can move out on January, February, March or whatever the next date that has been disclosed by the university. But I want kids to just 
take a more long term view what if there is a second wave of covid or there is a second uh, relapse of covid in which case january february would be difficult so uh, pratik according to you what what should be their plan should they be waiting for i mean if i have to make a decision to go abroad should i take one year as a time horizon or uh, the three month thing that people are thinking right now that they will be able to go back december january make right so uh, i'll give you two parts to that answer right one is it is clearly proved that indians are banias right so we want the value for every money that we are spending uh and and if i'm going to study online i would rather study at a coursera or edx and get a 3 and 1/2 thousand rupee degree i would not pay 300 dollars for one credit and study online uh so i think your poll also suggests that and most of the universities around the world understand the value of what they what they are offering at the moment uh so your your specific question of post covid right those are at the moment uh, a lot of hypotheses as a parent of a 17 year old i would say it's not really worth it uh, to have a 17 or a 18 year old on the us campuses or or international university campuses so just i don't know if people are aware uh, a lot of the big campuses have put their students out even if they were staying on campus so we have been trying to fight with a lot of these our partner universities to ensure that indian students are at least given space in these campuses uh, and you will be surprised we are talking of the top 50 in the world that right? uh, you know we are communicating to and they are not allowing anybody to stay on campus so if you think oh you know my son or daughter has gone to us and she is staying on campus so it should be fine uh, you know guess what it is not going to be fine because they are not going to if assuming there is a second wave they are going to push you off campus so is it worth taking a risk i wouldn't take a risk and you know on the other note it is also right now sexy after michelle obama's daughter has done a gap year to do a gap year and just build your skills uh, and and as somebody who's who studied in a top league institute i can tell you uh, as ma'am also said i was in the first ranker in the class uh, i was a student of utpa sanghi actually so uh, i'm a part of the same schooling i i didn't score the first rank but it was the overall skills that you build and you project that that get you and become a winner so in a post assuming it comes back uh, my thought right now is i would just stay one year put in india uh, either i build a language skill i take a gap year and build my volunteering skills i build a mobile app i do a stem education uh, or i just go out and help my father in my business if he has a business because these are really tough times and put that on my sops and cvs uh to to build my skill set so that is something that i would recommend uh, to students who would wish to just look at study abroad as a compulsion and not look at india as an option so well, would you be sending let's say if you had your child 17 18 would you be sending him in the current way uh, current scenario abroad no so i uh, would again put it up little bit on the financial side of it so uh, some top universities to be honest are it's extremely tempting so i mentioned wharton i mentioned some really really good universities now let not talk about harvard and stanford and those uh, ivy leagues otherwise but other than that there are some very very good universities so if the if i feel okay that i may not get the admission back if i apply i am applying next year which is remote a very remote chance because friends you most of the students are expected to do better in boards than what you may have done in prelim so i agree with what tg ma'am said that you know uh, if you are doing a gap year and your scores you are expecting to be a little better than what you did before then it is worth it it is absolutely worth it stay back learn all the programs that they said coursera edux there are an academy a lot of online programs available if then you can do that that's a value for money and keep that intact thought of going abroad next year but if money is just not a problem and i am okay to spend 25 30 40 lakhs doing online programs and doing two semesters in india and i am okay to reduce my one uh, physical offline experience then i would uh, put in so specifically to ask me if it's my child i would strictly make him or her understand that boss it's better to be one year here why to reduce a one year of a offline physical experience on the campus 
and make your four year program as three year and three year as two year and what is that die hard necessity to be there it's not at 130 crore india 135 it's a huge big nation and it's not that we don't have zero education system there are some enough good programs and if you don't believe in a lot of indian courses there are international programs available online and if you had to study their online programs and pay 30 40 lakhs not worth it but still if money is just not a problem then i think it's it's just you could have gone for it for me i would have been little more roi guys as pratik said little more money types so i would have i would have told to postpone it by year so so akash just want to drop here uh, and and you know make the audience aware so at university of bombay also there are a lot of programs which offer dual degrees right so i don't know if people understand the concept of dual degree one is the university of bombay degree and the other is the online degree of the government of india in the last notification a week and a half back has allowed top 500 university to offer degrees in india and accredit those degrees as valid degrees in india now what that means is that a student could do a program say for example the iaqs program along with that do a program which is online degree uh, unic at say 10000 euros or 15000 euros and so he is now actually having two degrees in case he does not find employment uh, after going two years in those countries he can still bank on his university of bombay degree to be accredited and valued when he comes back uh, so i think a lot of first initial conversations which were can the finance profession go to us and then come back and work here those can be solved with this kind of a pro- with this kind of a, 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 a arrangement that is available now in the global ecosystem where you could do dual degrees and dual degrees are now if you are doing it from the top 500 in the world those are accepted by government of india as the valid degrees uh, along with the university of bombay degree which could be used for any governmental jobs as well uh, so that's the first part and i'll, I'll just you know from a double you know conversation i'd just like to add one is a financial aspect the other is a health aspect so your specific question of assuming this comes back and there is a resurgence of covid around the world and we yet don't have a vaccine i think i can have all the money in the world but when it comes to getting my kid in these markets which have more cases or is more volatile than mine i would not take that bet i would rather say to my kid that you know these are real tough times these are times where you could easily go off Uh, so just stay here for a year you can still pursue your dream of higher education in an international campus just stay for a year in india learn the skills whatever skills that could be it could be as niche as a photography skills or an entrepreneurial skills skill skills or a rural development skill whatever skill build that use those credits and then still go uh, so it's not about a financial decision for me it's about life and death uh, and i would any which way choose life over death uh, so i would just stay them i ask them to stay here at least for a year and then see where this world really goes and you already have a, your daughter studying abroad i think your experience would be more uh, more important your opinion would be more see for more me real, i'll be yeah experienced it uh, so for me i always believe when a child is planning to study abroad they are planning to study big hello can you hear yeah ma'am hello yeah yeah, yeah. so when a child is planning to study abroad or when parents are sending the child abroad it's based on flexibility of my course it's based on the quality of education and also it's based if i'm studying from a renowned university if i see the current scenario also nothing has changed whether i go virtual whether i stay in campus nothing is changing the, these three things are still there so uh, for us the advice to our children is if you have got admission in universities which are acceptance rate is in single digits in 5 to 7% please do virtual studies online because these three things are still same if you look at uk and hong kong children once till the time they don't go they don't realize that the contact hours is still uh, you know with the professors are very less most of the children study online in uk universities and hong kong they attend lectures but the contact hours with professor is less most of the studies are happening on your own or it's a virtual learning even if with covid or no covid situation 
so for me again i tell children and parents one thing is like how mr dhawal mentioned finances make lot of difference it's it's going to affect like if a parent tells me i have money only to give and give only till the undergrad program but the child has to fund his own masters i would not send the child abroad because the thing is uh this is not working i do not know the pressure on the child because he will have to take up a job is too high at an undergrad level so i would tell parents if you are making plans to tell send the child abroad it has to be you have to budget yourself for the next 10 years there is no way you can budget only for 4 years and say okay like the child will take care the child might take care later on but there is no guarantee with the current scenario that will the child be able to take care of it uh, they can take care of it there was an economic slowdown in 2009 but still children got jobs so what i am trying to say is when parents are trying to send children abroad don't only budget yourself for undergrad but budget them for the post grad studies as well that's where then otherwise i would say stay back in india do courses from delhi university mumbai university cries the top universities we have the best of the universities look at loyola chennai stella maris uh, xaviers you have the best of colleges stephens here we have the best of colleges in india the best of the brains have come from india and gone abroad okay so please plan yourself if i have a child uh, i mean the first thing i told my daughter when she was doing was can we like we spoke can we budget her education and yes she can study on her own for her masters but there is no guarantee will she get a job right now so if i am telling her no i have a budget only for undergrad and not for post grad it doesn't work the pressure is too much on the child to perform and take the first internship which might not be the best internship or if they are taking loans it doesn't work i mean the student loans are not at all acceptable so the virtual uh, learning in top you know say yes to it yeah so i i will now quickly so i i typically we have ran out of time so one last important question that to everyone to sum up the final thing before we start accepting questions uh what would be your advice to the student right now as like a final like in a one minute if you have something that you want to tell to the student that this is what you should do uh what would that advice be well i'll start off with you so uh, uh quickly because i have only one minute don't look at nmim as second third fourth campus if it's nmim as vile parla i'm getting it maybe fine but i won't go to sherpur and i won't go to uh, new bombay and all this with christ opening in lavasa that's all uh, let's not get into that so if they are getting into parent campuses fine in india based story or i would take a serious one year gap year if you have got admissions abroad i try to improve cv it could be anything do extra courses and look at seriously next year going abroad provided they are in the top universities uh, because by that time i also have a chance if i want to reapply and up uh, and upgrade to better colleges so i would do a drop year if it is going abroad if it is uh, somewhere in india then obviously there are many good options but stick to the parent campuses and also do lot of indian professional courses there are university institutes like yours iq as there are many such institutes that people have no awareness i think you guys need to do a little more job of marketing your programs because they are they are really good program as as i have seen that yes yeah i i would like uh, pratik you can take the second mantle one minute what would be your very important advice to the kids in the current circumstances so so i think my my biggest advice would be go for the knowledge don't go for immigration uh things change very fast policies change very fast nothing is constant in this world uh ma'am mentioned i was graduated from a top league institution in 2008 and it was incredibly tough to get a job uh so even if you go for an ivy league education job is not guaranteed in the us at least uh so go for the knowledge go and knowledge is your wealth so choose knowledge over the immigration policies for your education uh, roi will come if you study well so when you go focus on the knowledge and as dawal said institutes at, at universities across india are offering like iaqs data science institute we have other sports management programs you have a lot of wealth now within this country uh, a lot of niche programs within this country student needs to look out for them students need to look at industry and academia based programs 
uh, because a lot of industry, like I know for a fact that at your place you have ex LIC chairman who's a part of your board. Uh, so if you have these industry people who come in and be a part, uh, that programs would always stand out and have value around the world. So go for the knowledge, go for this, uh, don't go for the immigration policy. Did you, ma'am? My first choice would be to, to question, to ask myself, why do I want to study abroad? If it's for the flexibility of program, if it's for the quality of education, and if it's for net, uh, for anything which I feel is me and the STEM related fields, I will still go for the abroad studies. But if I am looking at, like how Mr. Dhawal mentioned, if I'm looking at backups in India, I would look at the parent companies. I wouldn't look at the parallel, the new campuses which have started for a lot of companies, sorry, universities. I would not look at them. Another thing I would like the children to understand is uh, the children who are already in the top league are in the top league. But the children who have got into, if they have not got into the top universities, think about taking a gap year, how everyone has said, and develop your skills. At the end of the day, my courses are not to where i did my courses from but to get a job and the job has to be coming out of my comfort zone and i have to come out of that comfort zone do multitasking so i have to develop my skills i have to do a lot of dual courses whether it's mumbai university along with certain professional courses i will still have to do them whether you are in india whether you are in abroad whether you are in any of the abroad universities without multitasking without doing your networking without developing your skills and participating in activities i don't think we will get a job so it's not only the hard worker who's getting a job it's the smart worker who is being looked at right now in the corporate sector so i'm sure i'm sure there is we have uh, really exceeded time but akash i will just tell everyone all your uh, participants guys stoppers don't do different things they do things differently why are we only concentrating on job jobs we should be employers and not employees every time yeah sorry <laughs> i agree with that mr dhawan yeah 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 <laughs> thanks for that uh, excellent uh, input guys there are two three important things that we wanted to instill one is that whatever career decision that you are looking at it's a very important decision yeah so there are certain important questions that we got we have answered we would want some more questions so is anyone who wants any particular question to be answered can pour in through and uh, we will ask it to the panelists to answer I'll just wait for a couple of minutes for the questions to seep in and then I'll start asking the panelists. You have a question uh, tab, you can just put in your questions and send across. Okay, I'm just waiting for a couple of more minutes. So then the question started flowing in. Okay, so uh, so there's one person who's asking for the future of law as a field in India and abroad. And I think I I let Dawal answer this. Dawal, okay, what is the future of law? Brilliant. Ten out of ten. I'll tell you why. In U.S., the highest paid profession is uh, is law, and then is medicine right now. Okay. So top Indian law firms like Amarchand Mangalda, Shairi Amarchand Mangalda, Shardun Amarchand Mangalda, Jyoti Sagar Associates, Ketan and Ketan, Lutra, AZP Partners, Nishit Desa Associates. They are brilliant law firms, guys. I was just speaking to Mr. Rajendra Barod, a senior partner at AZP, who did the Geo Facebook deal. Guys, 50,000 crore rupees deal. And they charge in a great quantum of money for it. So law firms are recruiting brilliantly from the National Law School, Bangalore, Hyderabad, Kolkata, Jodhpur. Uh, Bhopal, Gandhinagar, MNLU, Mumbai, NLU, Delhi. If you are doing it from the national law schools, fine. Otherwise, I don't give too much of importance to state law, normal law schools in India. But law as a profession is brilliant, is 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 a way forward. As we become more and more materialistic, I'm sure this uh, less materialism is very temporary because of all this. And we have, a lot of people have moved towards divinity and spirituality. But we will come back to materialism once everything is fine. And where there is materialism, there is always feuds, right from the family levels to corporate levels. So lawyers will never be out of passion as far as you're doing your law from the national law schools. Pratik, there, uh, Pratik, this one specific for you 
is that let's say there is a student here who is there in the first year of her college and wants to change uh so yeah she's saying that i am currently in first year and can i change my college during this pandemic and i'm assuming this is mumbai neha so uh, i'll let uh, prateek answer this through yeah yeah so you can change the course as well as the college as well as the university so across the universities in india we follow something called as credit based systems like in the us like in the uk or rest of the world so if you have done first year at any of the colleges and you have a pass grade you could shift to other colleges you could even shift courses so for example if you are in sciences and now you choose that you know sciences is not the field for you and you want to shift to commerce it's practically possible so you don't need to worry about it it's it's easy to do anywhere within the college system of university of bombay as well okay, there is this three year degree course of iaqs again i think i'll, I'll let prateek answer will it make it eligible for masters in financial engineering in the us right so uh, if you go to a top league institutions no uh, you would need a 16 year education if you are going to the ivy league uh, so i am a student of university of, i have done my 3 year program at the university of bombay and then i went to the top league institution so i had to do a diploma program uh so what university of bombay offers is you could do uh idol based online programs which is the mcom so you do one year of mcom which makes you 16 year and then you can go to these institutions or we have other options now uh like pg diploma in data science uh where you could do you know programs specifically build a skill uh and those are accredited diploma one year programs specifically to fill the gap of the 16th year of education uh if you are going to not the top league institutions the ivy most of the other institutions around the world accept so it shouldn't be a problem with the three year uh, degree uh, to go abroad yeah so uh, i think answering that mr vaswani i think three years of iqs is eligible you will have to do one more year specifically because iqs since we have designed has specific uh, financial engineering pieces as a part of the curriculum Okay, uh, ma'am. There is one student here wants to understand the option in humanities in India. So when I am speaking about humanities, yes, it's a very wide field. I would not say I would not narrow it down only to marketing, human resources, or psychology. It's all about humanities. Is people connect? It can be wellness. It can be marketing. It can be even data analytics. If you have a logical sense, if I have done an economics course um, and I am doing sociology with it, I can get into civil services. I can still get into data analytics if I have a logical mind. I if I have no my program. the computer programming courses i can do lot of options so you can do public relations human resource management you can do psychology you can do marketing um, i mean there are lot of people related fields which are open for humanities even design is open and even the commerce fields are open for you so the humanities is not restricted to humanities that's where the children make a big mistake is if i have done my psychology they think that i cannot do business management which is not right because if i have an acumen for management and entrepreneurship i can still do that after doing my humanities course so i can except for the science field i can do anything which is related to commerce i can do supply chain management and logistics right mr dhawal if i want to correct correct so i i did not because we have time restrictions we have not spoken about all those fields but guys uh, what does zomato does what is dine out is doing what is swiggy is doing this is all supply chain and logistics so if you would not believe the harvard case study discussing the indian dabba walas where the coke and pepsi and all those ceos were in the front row to understand how the logistics happens across everything is trended right now but imagine right now in the militancy affected area also they are eating lays wafers they are eating pepsi it's all about supply chain and logistics so amazon flipkart everything is all about supply chain and logistics so there are a whole lot of new age careers for which i think we will have akash to put up another webinar for that <laughs> <laughs> so i just add just for the wider audience right uh, you have a lot of options as ma'am just rightly said when you do humanities uh, for example a bba program in most of the indian universities right you go whichever would always have psychology as an option 
or if you go to for example design programs you always have psychology as an option uh, so right now we are in an age where interdisciplinary learning is very very high uh, so whether you're doing a program even in stem there you will have a human component because you can't build apps for automation only right you're building it for humans so you would still need to understand the human thought process and mindset while you are even building the stem products so uh, right now we are all interlinked like a global system where subjects and topics are all correlated to each other so humanities is not living in a silo they are all interconnected together i'll take one or two more so there is one student who is asking how is christ pune they got into bcom in fintech christ pune I, and i think the world since you mentioned i i would let you answer this no so first ask you wanted to do data analytics of fintech programs because you just got into christ and because they have given you a deadline by so and so date pay the fees I, it's funny guys so just wait just decide what you want to do don't do it for the sake of it because i am not going to get into nmms uh, i am not going to get your so i will take christ it is not the way your aptitude your interest and personality does matter and i am not for going anywhere but the parent campus so if it's christ bangalore abs otherwise yes pratik can add i guess something so i am going to just add right uh, so not as a representative but i am going to say this uh, there are a lot of these university campuses which are yet not recognized by international agencies right so the way if you study in the us and come back to india your degrees aren't recognized for certain jobs and careers similarly these campuses because they are new age and they are satellite campuses or they are another campuses for example in dubai right now khda does not approve those campuses and so you just when you are looking at a option just ensure that in case tomorrow you you are mobile and you have to go to canada to work would they re recognize these campuses Uh, as an official degree holding grants so my advice to parents would be if you are doing undergrad in india and wish to have students go to do masters uh, always look at state universities they have those have long history those have long approvals how can you create a university 160 year old again right so there is no way we are going to be able to do it so at at these levels get your basics right get your systems right because tomorrow when you go to do a job outside you would not even be graduate so with a masters degree internationally you may not have a graduate degree which is valid degree uh, so always ensure that angle when you're looking at these campuses thank you uh, i think i'll take the last one is a field like industrial psychology followed by hr a good field to consider today and uh, i don't know industrial psychology i, I mean who, who wants to take it uh, i i'll take it uh, so uh, guys i would advise you to wikipedia this lady or google a lady called leena nair okay she was an mba from xlri and leena nair is right now on the board of unilever based out of uk she there is hindustan unilever which is one of the subsidiaries in india that that with uh, unilever has subsidiaries in more than 180 countries she is a brilliant lady who pursued this program at at a bachelor level and did her mba later so industrial psychology followed by an mba hr is is also a fantastic combination so it's that's a short answer provided you are doing an mba from a top college like xlri in india or maybe so remember hr and marketing jobs when you are applying to from to some of the universities abroad they generally don't prefer third world countries because you are not a native to those countries so you don't know the dem demographics and the people taste and their culture so it's very very important that you have a strong bachelor's degree or a master's degree in that subject in india a good work ex then think about international options but yes industrial psychology and mba hr is a good combination to get mba from colleges like xlri I think Pratik. I think I'm Akash Vendra. Yeah, I think he was away. But I'm I'm just going to add to what this Dava said. Right, any kind of knowledge is is interesting. I don't think uh, most of us today can make a guess of which careers will be relevant tomorrow. Uh, I I I just think that all the options that a student can study, as long as you are really interested, right? So if you are interested to study whatever topic, and you are good at that topic, you have a global demand. um you know so i was joking and i met somebody at the university who was doing wildlife photography and he said he makes 700000 dollars a year just clicking photographs of these wildlife animals right and 
and for me that is just a unique career option which is the world we live in today if you have a skill you have a value uh, so don't you know i i don't think we would be able to or be capable to say whether this will last 20 30 but if you can build that skill uh, any topic of your interest you would be employable enough uh, and you would be able to make a good sustainable life for yourself so industrial psychology just to add to what pratik sir i'm sure you're really short of time akash is watching the time but industrial psychology don't follow with an mba and hr necessarily you can do a course like a public relation guys google a lady called reshma shetty who used to manage salman khan before and now they have got this big companies which is pr is is by itself a very big field so do industrial psychology as a base and don't restrict to mba and hr there are a whole lot of options and plethora of them will come up once you pursue your industrial psychology into your into your bachelors yeah great i i think i hope i know i may not have answered all questions or we may not have answered all questions but it would be guys there is a small uh, survey that would start once you end the webinar there is a section that if we have not answered any particular questions please please fill in your questions we will get the answers to you via an email after uh, after the webinar so that all your questions get answered hopefully it was a good experience and you will be able to make a more informed decision about your career there were quite a few important things that personally were discussed hopefully you take them all into consideration and uh, take your career decision guys stay safe and hoping for a better career for your yourselves thank you thank you for your light thanks panel. fellow thank panelists thanks akash thanks 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 fellow panelists thanks akash thanks i guess for stay safe stay healthy guys thank you so much Thank you thank you, thank you for everything thank you